Michigan running back Blake Corum has been the most productive running back in college football over the last two seasons, but that does not mean he is destined for stardom in your dynasty leagues. We will explain why on this episode of the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. You are Locked On Dynasty Football, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Here are your hosts, Marcus Mosher and Kate Madjuke. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. Today's episode is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for $20 off your first purchase. I am your host, Marcus Mosher. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosher. Joining me today, as always, is Kate Majuk. You can follow her on Twitter at Kate Majuk. You can also read her at Pro Football Focus and Behind the Steel Curtain. On today's show, we're taking a look at Michigan running back Blake Corum, one of the most productive running backs in the country over the last two years. But just how valuable will he be in your dynasty leagues? Okay, let's first start with the tape, which is amazing, incredible. <laughs> Use any word that you want to describe it. What did you see when you watched him? Let's start with the basics. So obviously Blake Corum, you mentioned it, one of the most productive running backs in all of college football, just an absolute bowling ball. Once you get the ball in his hands, he's on the smaller side. He's just under five, eight, five, seven and three quarter inches, 205 pounds. But what I love about Blake Corum is that you would never guess that he was as tiny as he is watching his tape because he runs with power contact balance and is one of the best decision makers at the running back position in this entire draft class. He's absolutely incredible. I, I was just looking up a stat to just make sure I'm correct. Blake Corum has never lost a game in college football that he started ever, ever. I mean, he is it, it, that good. No. Yeah. Pretty good. And I know a lot of it, you can say, yes, that when the Michigan team was very good. I understand that a lot of it's just because Blake Corum is freaking incredible. I mean, you look at the numbers over the last three years, Kate, uh, 56 rushing touchdowns over the last three years, 56. Is that good? To- yeah. I mean, it's uh, certainly not bad. 59 total rushing touchdowns. The dude is productive in any time you watch the Michigan game over the last three years. He's been the best player on the field. Let's go through some of his strengths and weaknesses as a player. He is an absolute bowling ball. I mean, he is so small, but he is, for my money, I think he's the best player in this class at breaking tackles, despite being five foot seven and a half, 202 pounds. He has elite vision. He can see the the tiniest cracks and he can get through them. It's kind of like a mouse that way, right? The, what, what they always say about mice, if it's the thick or the width of a eraser on a pencil, they can get through it. That's kind of like Blake Corb. That's exactly what he does behind the line of scrimmage. And he comes from an experienced pro style offense. Uh, there's so much to like about his game. And I think so much of it translates well to the NFL. Yeah. I think what you're going to love about Blake Corum is just that wiggle that he has And I'm going to be honest, it's hard to find some weaknesses. Good, not great speed. He's like, you know, for a guy that's as small as he is, he is not somebody that builds his game on speed. He actually is a true power back, which I don't think you see often for a guy of his size, especially one where he was truly asked to carry Michigan's offense. Like you said, uh, he's never played or, or never started a game at Michigan where he lost. Well, guess what? Like, you can say, well, yeah, it was the Michigan offense. He was the Michigan offense. He was the foundational part of that offense. Um, obviously, again, mentioning that size, he is very small for an NFL running back, fifth percentile in terms of height, 25th percentile in terms of uh, weight at 205 pounds. And he comes out with a lot of experience, which Take that for what you will, because with that experience comes a lot of that edge in terms of decision making. But coming out with 675 total rushing attempts, um, which, again, we're going to say, like, could be a down a down point. Right. 
250 plus touches in each of the last two seasons. So there are some miles on the, on the tires, but I also think that those miles on the tires have um, really shown to be important for Blake Quorum. Cause I think with all of those touches, he has gained so much in terms of the way that he sees the field. Um, his decision-making is just bar none. You, you mentioned it. it. He sees a hole and he's got, you know, I, I think a strong foundational base as a runner where he can, he can maneuver his footwork. He can find the wiggle to, to hit that hole. And then, you know, with, with the power to withstand some of the contact that might come with that. My biggest concern, and you had it on the graphic there, if you're watching with, with us on YouTube right now, is the wear and tear. You're talking about somebody who is uh, has over 725 touches in the Big Ten, and those touches aren't – not every touch is weighed the same, right? Like mm -hmm. I'm not going to pick on the, pack, the, the Big 12, but running – at Oklahoma and Texas against some pretty light boxes is completely different than running against seven and eight man boxes against Ohio state, Penn state, Michigan state. Like that's just a totally different brand of football. The other thing that's very concerning Kate is in 2022, he had the torn meniscus and the sprained MCL and the severe bone bruise that caused him to miss the rest of that season. Uh, you remember he couldn't play in the playoffs and I thought this year, like if you're just comparing his 2022 tape to his 2023 tape, I thought he looked slower. I didn't think he looked quite as dynamic. Now he still scored 27 touchdowns this year. I just think he looked like a lesser athlete. Now the hope I would assume is that the further he gets away from that injury, maybe the, the better he looks, but I also don't know. He's also going to be 24 during his rookie season. And that makes me a little bit nervous uh, as well. Yeah. Compared to Braylon Allen, who we talked about on yesterday's show, literally the youngest prospect in this draft class just turned 20 years old. Blake Corum, he's got several years, uh, what uh, almost four years on a guy like Braylon Allen. I think we know exactly who Blake Corum is coming out of the draft. Again, he is, a power back that you would never assume is a power back when you see his height. But Marcus, the tape is absolutely incredible. The proven track record of production, absolutely incredible. There are, I think, so many aspects of his game that make him one of the most pro-ready running backs in this class with a very well-rounded skill set. Yes. The capability of carrying a true... NFL offense on his back. I mean, you might look at the the decreased production um, and or decreased efficiency year over year in uh, his 2021 season, 6.6 .6 yards per carry. We've seen that decline each of these past seasons. You mentioned that the injury last year, and and maybe that has you know some sort of impact on just overall efficiency. But generally speaking, I'm also going to be a, a little bit more skeptical of putting all of my weight into efficiency metrics um, or like specifically yards per carry with a guy that is facing stacked boxes as often as Blake Corum yep. did against the caliber defenses that Blake Corum was playing against. Like all of those factors together kind of minimize how concerned I am about Maybe that that decreased efficiency, especially toward the end of his career. Maybe he wasn't a, a hundred percent healthy, even coming off of that injury from last He's season. Very fair. Um, and that's something that you know maybe we're we're going to see him take a step forward. But I don't think there's any question that we know exactly what we're going to get out of Blake Corum at the next level, and that is a very uber competitive, tough running back that plays much bigger than his size. Uh, we're going to talk about his dynasty value in his analytic profile, in the next couple segments, but just one thing I wanted to mention why I have so much respect for his game. Here are a couple comments that Jim Harbaugh made about him uh, in, in this. This is all from Dane Brugler's the beast uh, via the athletic. Uh, he says he wants to be great and nothing will slow him down. He was a 2023 team captain. Harbaugh said, you you coach your whole life and you will probably never have a guy like this. Um, it just seems like he is a revered teammate uh, that everybody absolutely loves. And the toughness is there. The vision is there. 
Uh, he is the type of player that I like to root for, uh, which is why this is going to be a really tough conversation when it comes to his dynasty value. But let's look at the analytic profile because, as you would expect, pretty good. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now an authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting tickets even faster and easier. Prices on the Game Time app actually go down the closer that you get to first pitch. And with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying MLB tickets. You can save up to 60% off buying last minutes for sports concerts, comedy, and theater events near you. Plus, save even more with exclusive in-app deals on select seats ahead of the game or the event. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem promo code LOCKEDONNFL for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We want to let you know that the Locked On NFL Mock Draft Show is available now. Find the ultimate six-episode series on Locked On NFL Draft to hear who the local Locked On ex experts are picking for every NFL franchise with live reactions from local college football experts and even the fantasy football angle. The Locked On NFL Mock Draft Show is available now on Locked On NFL Draft on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. All right, Kate, let's dive into the advanced analytics here for Michigan running back, Blake Corum. What do we got? Uh, as probably everybody would expect here, a lot to like from uh, Blake Corum, 93rd percentile in PFF rushing grade over the past two seasons. Middle of the pack, missed forced tackles per attempt, 20th percentile of, in yards after contact per attempt, with, which honestly, I found kind of surprising when you actually watch the tape because it doesn't seem like that's necessarily a a big problem for him in his game. Um fumble rate, he's middle of the pack as well. Where you see probably the the uh, greatest weaknesses in his overall profile is in the the point of receptions. Uh receiving grade 39th percentile yards per route run 14th percentile. How much of that is a concern for you when it comes to Blake Corum? The fumbles more than the, the receiving stuff. Michigan just didn't ask him to run a lot of routes out of the backfield. Most of his stuff was dump offs and screens and all that kind of stuff. But when they did throw in the ball, you saw him be a capable receiver with soft hands. Like, I think he's going to be fine. I, is he going to be Alvin Kamara or Christian McCaffrey? No, but he is certainly going to be fine as a receiver. My issue is the fumbles. Um, three fumbles during the 2023 season, five career fumbles, which isn't a ton considering his workload, but it is a little concerning that he fumbled the ball so much this year. Uh, just not a very big player. Uh, and sometimes those smaller running backs do have a tendency to fumble a little bit more, but I don't worry about it with Blake Corum too much. Like if he has a weakness, he'll figure it out and he'll get it solved. Yeah. I, I think generally speaking, when you look at the work ethic and the the overall strengths of Blake Corum, I think all of them are going to lend themselves to uh, being responsive to some of these these you know issues. And fumbling is something that can be coached in terms of of ball security. So if that's a problem coming out, he is the type of guy that I think is more than capable of taking coaching. Um, if that's something that they want to work on at the next level, so not not overly concerned there. Um, I'm going to be honest, like not a whole lot to talk about when it comes to his advanced metrics. Um, tell me can about, I give you, can I give you one that worries me a little bit? It's not a super advanced one or anything, but yeah. I, if you look at the, the breakdown last year in yards per carry by month, 5.7 in September, 4.9 in October, 4.1 in November, and then like 3.8 in December and January, I combined those two together because he only played one game in December and two games in January. So it's not, not a super big sample size. It is a little concerning that he, he was wearing down as the season was going on. 
I think that's fair. Although, again, if he's not fully healthy, I would probably have kind of expected that if he never got back to 100% after that injury, of course, when he's amassing, you know, how many touches per game. Like, yeah, I, I would kind of expect to see that kind of decrease in efficiency, generally speaking. Um, I think all of that's fair. Another, um, you know, metric worth mentioning, not a, a stable metric uh, per PFF, but one that I think is worth considering just with the fact that like, yes, he is small, but speed isn't necessarily the game. Like the athleticism isn't the the point that you're going to talk about with Blake Corum. Uh, 32nd percentile breakaway run rate over the past two seasons. Again, like for the, the type of runner he is, he's more of the power back runner and a, a guy that I, I think is going to, you know, wear down opposing defenses more with physicality than with speed. Um, you know, I, I think that kind of speaks to the player that he is again for a guy that is on the smaller side. I, I mean, you would probably maybe expect a little bit more um, for, you know, a, a 205 pound running back right a four, five, three, 40 second yard da- or 40 yeah. yard dash Great. 60th percentile. But like, Again, like for a guy that's on the smaller side, you might expect a little bit more. I um, also want to give you some data that <laughs> this that might actually make his life easier in the NFL. Do you want to guess what percentage of his rushes came with at least seven or more defenders in the box? I'm thinking it's pretty, pretty significantly high, given the fact that, again, this is a guy who it, you knew he's on the field they're probably going to be making an effort to get the ball into his hands because he is the foundational player. Uh, I'm going to guess 70%. And you would be low. 82% of his carries. Wow. Uh, Stack boxes. Compare that to somebody like Jalen Wright, who had six total carries that can stack boxes last year. Uh, it wouldn't be a surprise if he goes to the right offense, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, where he's just seeing – fewer defenders in the box and his life gets a lot easier. Now the, the the drawback is he had a great offensive line at Michigan. There's a chance that he goes to an NFL team that has nowhere near the same kind of talent. Right. And all of a sudden it's a little bit harder, but I can't imagine that he's going to go anywhere where he's seeing a loaded box and 80% of his runs. Yeah. I, I have to imagine that he's going to get, things are going to get a little bit maybe easier, quote unquote, easier for him at the next level. But Marcus, I think we've been immensely positive about Blake Corum, acknowledging his many, many strengths while also acknowledging the fact that like, it feels like we have to kind of parse for the weaknesses. And I think our listeners are probably very curious about why we aren't full speed ahead on Blake Corum, despite all of the strengths and despite the the incredible qualities that I, I think is going to make him one of the best all around football players to coach and to play. And with the impact he makes on and off the field, he might be one of the best football players coming out of this draft class overall. But my, my here's my fear, Kate. I'm afraid that the team that drafts him, they're going to absolutely fall in love with him but they're going to want him to make it through his rookie contract. Again, he's going to be 24 during his rookie season. So rather than put a bunch of work on the front end of his deal, they're going to want to try to limit him a little bit. They're going to look at his size five, seven and three quarters, 205 pounds and just say, Hey, this is a really nice player, but it's not somebody that we can give a significant amount of touches to. We want him to be like the one B to a one a in a backfield. And for us dynasty dynasty players, it's just not all that appealing. Like we, we really like the running backs that have a very set role every single week. I'm not sure Blake Corum is going to be that guy. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I want to talk about some potential landing spots for him that where he could see his value go up. I want to talk about where he's being drafted among running backs right now and some player comps for Blake Corum. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by BetterHelp. Sometimes we all need the opportunity to get something off of our chest. Big or small, certain things can really start to get to you. It's important to let that out, especially to someone who is unbiased in your life. So today I want to tell you how I really feel about something. You might even be thinking the same thing this week. 
I miss the days when the NFL draft used to be on Saturday and Sunday, and it was just an all day event. This Thursday, Friday, Saturday nonsense. Listen, for especially for us East Coast dads, this is just it's too much. I, I, I'm, I'm exhausted by the end of the weekend. I liked it better when it was only two days. I feel better. Just wanted to get that. I, NFL, please go back to the Saturday, Sunday format. It was so much better. Therapy can be different for everyone. Most of us have much bigger problems than what time is the NFL draft and how it's laid out. Uh, but it's important to get things off of your chest every once in a while. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's done entirely online. It's designed to be flexible and suited to your schedule. All you have to do is fill out a brief questionnaire. It's so easy. And visit betterhelp.com slash lockdown NFL to get 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, H E L P.com slash locked on NFL. We also want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and the end of the NHL. Baseball is in full swing. And FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers can get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all in an app that is safe, secure, and super easy to use. Listen, while you're watching the draft on Thursday, put on some of those NBA playoff games or put on the hockey playoff games. There's absolutely nothing better than playoff hockey. I'm just so sad that my pens don't get to enjoy it this year. That's okay. But what are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Welcome back to the Locked On Dynasty Football Podcast. We are discussing Michigan running back Blake Corum's dynasty value. Uh, Kate, where is he currently being drafted among rookie running backs? Uh, he is being drafted right now RP5, which I think is a pretty pretty fair spot here, going behind uh, Jonathan Brooks of Texas, Trey Benson of SA FSU, Jalen Wright of Tennessee, and Marshawn Lloyd of USC. Now, I do think this is, for any points of hesitancy, I think this is a pretty, it's a decent spot, right? For Blake Corum, who, again, the player, the prospect, you're not going to have a, a ton of question marks about. Uh, but like a, a guy like Braylon Allen, who we, we talked about on yesterday's show, who I seem to like a little bit more than consensus here. Um, like for a guy like Braylon Allen, I think the ceiling might be a, a bit higher than a guy like Blake Corum at the next level. And what I do want to point out, and this is maybe just nitpicking, honestly, because you have to look at these prospects, obviously, with a very individual eye. And this is a league that I think is starting to become more friendly to smaller sized player size is becoming less of an issue, especially at the wide receiver position. But um, like generally speaking, when it comes to running backs that have come in under at five, eight or under five, eight, like hasn't been a whole ton of production. It's basically been like Ray Rice, Maurice Jones, Drew and mm -hmm. Devonta Freeman. Like those are the three guys that we can point to with this type of build that we can say, okay, like they have had successful seasons for fantasy managers. In fact, dating back to the 2020 season, there have been just eight instances of a player at five, eight or smaller to score more than 250 fantasy points and half PPR formats in a single season. And those are the three players I already mentioned. Maurice Jones, Drew, Ray Rice, and Devonta Freeman are the only three guys that have done it dating back to 2020 or sorry, uh, 2000, 2000. Yeah. 2000. And what's funny is Devonta Freeman is actually one of my comps for Blake Corum. I think that's probably like the high end comp, but I wanted to give you another running back. I, I actually have two and they both were drafted by the Rams. I think the low end comp for him would be like Darrell Henderson, who coming out of Memphis, very small running back. Um, I actually think Corum's a little bit more explosive, but that mold of, we really like him. He can be our starter, but he's somebody that we've got to kind of manage his carries. I think a more likely outcome is Kyron Williams, who was sub 5'9", came in at 194 pounds at the NFL Combine. He actually ran a 4'6", 40-yard dash, so significantly slower. But you're talking about somebody who had 
uh, second percentile arm length, third percentile wingspan, eighth percentile weight. And Kyron Williams is a top six dynasty running back right now because he landed with the right team. And that brings me to my next point, Kate. Like, where could you see Blake Corum landing where he could have, and I'm not saying Kyron Williams like impact, but a similar outcome where he's the featured guy right away. Here's the thing is that he is being drafted in a range. Uh, like what are we going to project him? I, I think third round is, I think that's probably a route, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Where I would project him. And in the third round, I mean, you've got a very, very wide range of, of picks. He could go, I think anywhere in the third round between picks 365 and a hundred. Like I could see the range of outcomes being very wide, which means he could go to any NFL offense. Theoretically, like draft capital is not going to be a limiting factor um, of where he goes. And I do want to point out, and this is going to be really dumb, but I can't, I, I'm going to be, I'd be remiss not to mention it. The LA chargers who yeah, do have yeah. picked 69. You have a head coach that, you know, is fully enamored. I believe the quote was that, um, he wants to be great. Nothing will slow him down and you coach your whole life and you will never see a guy like this. I can a hundred percent see Jim Harbaugh and the way that they're building this offense. They have Gus Edwards. They have Greg Roman, who is, I mean, he's had That's one perfect, season man. where he has executed an NFL offense that didn't rank outside of the top 28 in total pass attempts. Like this is a guy, yep. this is a team that I think is going to run, want to run the ball. They have pick 69, which again, I don't necessarily think, uh, especially as high as I would anticipate uh, Jim Harbaugh and company being on a guy like Blake Quorum. They obviously know him very well. They know the character very well. Um, I keep picturing him with the LA Chargers, even despite the fact I know they signed J.K. Dobbins, but uh J.K. Dobbins has not been able to stay healthy no. and he's coming off a ruptured Achilles. Like, let's slow our roll. I got three fits and I want you to tell me your thoughts on that. I'll, I'll be quick. The Raiders uh, who pick early in the third round, all they have in the roster right now is Zemir White uh, and Alexander Madison. They are in need of a running back. How would you feel about Blake Corum to the Raiders? I would like that. Um, I would hope that things wouldn't get too convoluted um, in terms of the rotation of back, but Again, once we saw Josh Jacobs go down last year, like even despite the fact that that the GM has come out to say like we want to use a, a running back by committee, yep. um, you know this is a a team that defensively wants to run the ball. I think that would be a fair landing spot, albeit I I would just be a little bit nervous about a potential rotation because I want to see Blake Quorum get a lot of touches. Uh, another one that I'm going to mention is the Ravens at pick 62. Now I won't be surprised if they move down a little bit, but obviously John Harbaugh knows him very well because of Jim Harbaugh, right? Mm -hmm. They signed Derrick Henry to his, what's essentially a one-year deal. Keaton Mitchell coming off the torn ACL, uh, justice Hill in the final year of his contract. I could see Blake Corum coming in being the guy that spells Derrick Henry this year. And then by 2025 being the entrenched starter, it seems like he would be perfect for that offense. I think that would be a, a perfect fit. And we mentioned at, at the top of the show, just how many uh, stacked boxes Blake Corum faced probably going to have uh, his life looking a lot easier with the Baltimore Ravens. Even if that's not necessarily the sexiest landing spot for his fantasy value here in the 2024 season. Last one. I know the Dallas Cowboys have done a ton of research on Blake Corum and they really, really like him. That is a very interesting fit to me. I mean, any running back to the Dallas Cowboys is a pretty interesting fit here, Marcus. But I mean, Blake Corum, he can be that true three down guy. Is there any concern after just coming off, uh, just drafting Deuce Vaughn, obviously not, not with any sort of significant draft True. capital but they might they might be able to use a little bit more size in terms of, uh, of their depth chart but i don't think deuce vaughn is making any impact on any decisions they make size is all. just a number i know exactly. um and again my comp for him coming out like it, it's devin singletary for me and the, the reason for that is uh you know he he earned that nickname motor in college and for very good reason because 
despite that lack of size, you would never, ever guess that when you were watching nope. the tape that he's as small as he is. And the way he moves around like a bowling ball, I see so much Devin Singletary to his game. But a guy that I think overall coming out, a, a better better NFL running back, a more I ready agree. NFL running back with more proven production against top-end collegiate competition. Blake Quorum, a great NFL player, I think, already day one. Where does he land and what is his long-term dynasty value? I think are two questions that like are going to be very crucial to him in particular long term. Like I agree. Ugh. Well, here's the like, thing. Quorum's a toughie, guys. He's I, a toughie. I will say so tomorrow, little preview, we're gonna be doing a two-round super flex mock draft with Matt Williamson. I'm gonna be very curious to see where Blake Quorum lands in that draft. Uh, does he make it to the top of the second round? Does he fall out of the draft altogether? Cannot wait to get yeah. into that. Go download the podcast wherever you get the Locked On Dynasty Football podcast. We are free and available on all platforms. Go follow Kate on Twitter at Kate Majuk. I'm at Marcus underscore Mosher, and we will see you right back here tomorrow with Matt Williamson doing a two round rookie mock draft ahead of the actual NFL draft on Thursday. We will see you then.